Hi guys, welcome to today's video. It's a big one. It's the top 10 for 2022 uh, games. And mainly I tried to stick to games that came out in 2022. But I do have one or maybe two on there that aren't 22 to releases. Just because of how many times I've played them and how much I've fallen in love with them. Um, so mostly they will be 2022 games. But there is a couple on there that are slightly out of that because of what I've played and my experiences. So obviously let me know what your top 10 is. I'd love to hear from you. I've been watching loads of other videos and seeing what other content creators have said and mine is completely different to theirs as expected due to our different taste in gaming and things we different people like so uh, this list is really interesting I think um, it's really hard to put together really hard to choose top 10 so I do have another video coming out with games that I think are amazing as well from 2022 and that didn't make it into this list but games I've really really enjoyed so have a look at that as well if you want to look for other games that you might find fit your particular tastes or interests um, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Um, we've just gone past 200. We're hopefully going to push for 500 at some point. But that will be uh, dependent on people subscribing and helping out. So please help out. And if you like the video, put a thumbs up and leave any comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, see you soon. Okay, so number 10 on my list is Sentinels of the Multiverse. Um, reason for this being it's a fantastic uh, superhero co-op game. It's really easy to set up, it's really easy to play. Um, your characters are pre-built for you. So my number one game of all time is actually Marvel Champions behind me. But if you don't want to make your own decks or have to mess about with deck building, these characters have been made for you. They've all been adjusted in this remake to make them playable. Um, I've played through every character in this box. Some of them are harder to play than others. Some of them are easier to play than others. Some of them are fantastic. Um, a lot of them are really cool and interesting. And I think every person that plays this can find a character that they will enjoy. There's 10, I think, in here. I can't remember. Uh, 12 heroes in here. You normally have to play with at least three. Um, you can... I can't remember exactly now. I played it so much when I first got it. Um, but that was a few months back. And I'm waiting for the expansion before I play more because there's more characters coming. Um, and more scenarios and things. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's six villains. There's six environments. There's a way to play it as a campaign, um, which is really cool, actually. Uh, I've done that, and it's really good fun. Um, and you can play it as one, two, three, or four, or even five, I think. Uh, one to five, yeah. You can have five heroes. If you play one play, you can play all five heroes yourself. Uh, if you play two, you can split it how you want, two and three, or something like that, or split it down. Uh, it's a great, great game. Um, a lot of fun. There's environments that happen and do things. There's enemies that do things. There's combinations of enemies and environments that make life really difficult for you. Or there's some slightly simple ones where you think, oh, I'm doing a hard villain, so I'll have an easy environment. You can mix and match what you want, how experienced you are, how good you are with the characters. And the characters also, some of them have come with uh, some foil. Oh, I think I've got the pack here. Some foil things as well, which have got some different stuff on the backs. Um, they're double-sided, some of the heroes with different powers once you've got a bit more uh, experience in the game. So... There's a lot to keep you going here. Like I say, 12 heroes in the main box. Six villains, therefore six different encounters you can have. Um, you can mix and match your heroes each time. You've got some really cool people. Like this guy builds up power and uses his like gun and stuff. And he's a really good tank. Um, this guy's a kind of Superman-ish looking hat character. This girl's really cool and uh, really fun. He takes damage and like heat and cold and things and then does more damage back depending on what kind of status effect he's had on him and stuff. It's really, really cool, really interesting. And all the heroes have been made by the people who make this game. So they're original, they're interesting and they're really great fun. So that's my number 10 pick. Let's get it to number nine. So number nine on the list is uh, Destinies. If you've never played Destinies, it's a fantastic game with miniatures and app driven um, storytelling game it is amazing uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's 2022 this game but I've only got to play it in 2022 so I'm classing it as 2022 for me and there is was whiz or was a kickstarter about it for the witchwood stuff that looks amazing so we've held off playing this recently so until that gets released and we get some of that stuff and um, which looks really cool and I want to get some more of the expansion sand and uh, I think it's called sand and stone sand or something it looks really good um, the minis in here are great the table presence is brilliant. The exploration and story is great. Uh, it's got a really interesting combat mechanic. Um, and if I just open it up and show the box inside, there's 
amazing minis, especially this big guy in the middle who um, I won't spoil what he's for, but he's really cool. And the way you go up in your different tracks and you can affect how easily or how difficult it is for you to roll uh, good rolls, which is great. Um, the more you play, the longer the time you can lower the chances of getting bad rolls. It's a really cool system. Each character ends up being really different. Um, you scan a lot of stuff on your phone to get items and use items and uh, it works really really well um, a lot of companies I would not trust with this type of game but Lucky Duck Games do fantastic implementations of digital apps and pretty much all of their games with digital apps work really well um, not on my list for this year but uh, Chronicles of Crime is also another app game by Lucky Duck Games that works brilliantly well as well so this game is fantastic um, really great I think it really really shines at three players it's fantastic at two still um, at one play, I'm not 100% sure it's all there yet, but they are releasing a new solo mode with the current Kickstarter. So I think that will revamp the solo mode and make that even better. So it's all positive and it's all a lot of uh, awesome stuff. And even just this base game, which comes with a tutorial and three um, three main missions as part of like a campaign story. Um, that is quite a lot of content. Um, and I can't wait to get more of the stuff from the Kickstarter next year. So it may even make my list for 2023 if that's allowed because the new stuff looks brilliant um if you've tried destinies you'll understand uh, definitely worth a go it's a fantastic game so let's get this to number eight okay guys so number eight is libertalia which is uh one of the only stone my games that i've actually enjoyed so far um it's a reworking of the original game by uh paolo mori um it was where made in conjunction with him um the theme is the only thing that stops it from going higher for me on the list this could potentially have been like a number one or a number two for me, but the cutesy animal theme doesn't really do a lot for me with the pirate theme. I think the rest of the game is amazing. The way it plays, the components, the smoothness of the experience. I think actually what's added from the original, from what I've seen, looks fantastic. Although I don't own the original, but I would like to get a copy at some point um, because the theme there really uh, interests me a lot more. It's a bit darker, a bit more piratey. Um, I think this more is really well suited for younger audiences. Um, it plays really simple. It's really easy to pick up and play. It's got a great um, addition for two players where there's a piece in the middle that gives you, uh, I think it was 20.5. Um, and if your number is less than that, then you go before him. If he's after that, you go after him and depending on night and day uh, terms. But that gives you really extra bit of interaction that you need in a two player game to help uh, smoothen out the experience. Um, and there's also a solo mode which is really good so this game for me um, I played it at UK Games uh, Exposition I think it was uh, the board game Meeple's copy but I'm not 100% sure but he taught it and did a fantastic job and I had such a great time playing with six that I bought a copy for myself straight away uh, as soon as I could afford to from the uh, Facebook buyers page um, and got it at a good price it's a fantastic game so um, absolutely brilliant. If you like pirate games and games that are easy to teach, give Libertalia a go. It's amazing. Let's take this to number seven. So number seven for me was Marvel United X-Men. Uh, also included in Marvel United because I got all of this stuff this year in the um, Kickstarter for this. I got all of the United stuff for regular and for X-Men. Um, a bit annoyed I didn't get the plastic components or the cardboard locations because these will definitely get worn out. But I think the X-Men Marvel United really, really mixes it up a lot, adds a lot to it. There's loads and loads you can do um, with the Marvel regular stuff. You've got pretty much all of the Marvel characters. Um, the only things missing are like uh, the cool different Lokis that you got in the TV show, which hopefully they'll add some of those to the newest campaign that's coming up for the multiverse, I think it's called. But um, this is one of the best come on games I think that there is out there. It's so easy to play, so easy to pick up. Uh, set up really quick, uh, fairly similar every time, but you can mix it up. Um, you also now have team modes in this with all the other X-Men stuff. You've got uh, one versus many. You've got bosses that are characters that are evil and good as well. So you've got the anti-hero, I think they call them, the purple ones. They can be good or bad. In the base set alone, you've got loads. As you can see on the back, there's two reds, which are evil, and uh, six, six regular heroes. But then you've got your two anti-heroes. Just in the base box alone which is a lot of stuff and obviously i have all of the stuff which uh you may not be able to see right now but if i take the camera off and pull it down 
as you can see it's all stored underneath my game desk um, along with my arcade stick for if I ever play Street Fighter it's a fantastic game um, well worth having a go even if you get just the core box it's great fun I highly recommend it let's get this one to number six so number six on the list is Resident Evil 3 um, we have spent at least 20 hours on this and we have only played the main base box uh, campaign um, it took us a while we really enjoyed it we took our time we went for everything we tried to 100% it we ended up with a great finish at the end the A star um, and it was a lot of fun um, I also have all of the other stuff and we're ready to hopefully play that soon when we can uh, I don't know when we can fit it in but me and my best friend are also in the work part of doing a Sleeping Gods playthrough we also have a uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle-earth playthrough uh, Vagrant Song and a few other campaigns already on the go at the minute uh, Jurassic World is another one uh, Legacy of Isla Nublar which we're about halfway through which is great maybe not even halfway yet, actually I think we're about five campaigns in out of twelve um, but this game is fantastic it's so tense the killing of the monsters is difficult to do you end up not really killing all the monsters and the zombies you normally end up running away until you have to have to have a boss battle or a big fight try and save your ammunition like in the game uh, you don't get loads of ammo you're not constantly pumping shotguns into people um, and there is ways to make it harder if you find it too easy as well uh, really excited for the resident evil 1 kickstarter backed as well because that comes with a more um, secretive kind of map layout where you don't really know what you're doing to start with and as you play it load the loadout becomes clearer uh, in this you can see the level so you can plan ahead and Resident Evil 1 is going to be different because you don't know what's coming so you have to more adapt on the fly um, so I love this it's really great to plan ahead and think but I think Resident Evil 1 will be a slightly different experience as well and great as well because it's already a great system and it works really well uh, finding the uh, items and things is really cool and mixing all the herbs and everything uh, it's really got that Resident Evil feel. It's a great, great game. Um, some people don't seem to like it, but I absolutely love it. Uh, it's one of my absolute favourites. It's one of the first things I started to paint. Um, I painted one of the Nemesis models. And I was really happy with how that came out. So yeah, it's great fun. And it's fun to paint the zombies because you're making them dead messy and they just look great anyway. Um, so yeah, Resident Evil 3. Fantastic game. Uh, definitely well worth checking out. Let's get this one on to the next. Number 5, I think. So, number 5 on this list is going to be... Another one that's just behind me, Cthulhu Death May Die. It's a recent one I've added to my uh, game shelf. Um, it's another Command Games game. and No, it didn't come out in 2022, I know. So this is a bit of a cheat one. But I have fell in love with this game. From the awesome minis. You can see on the back, there's loads in this box. There's 10 hero characters. There's two Elder Gods with their own mini little people. Uh, there's little, they're in the Hasta one. He's got his own Star Storm guy. There's two of these, two of them, two of them, one of those and one of those. And they all fit in the box really well. There's also six episodes in here. There's dice. There's manipulation of dice if you're not doing well. You've got stress that you can spend. But the stress also helps you to buy items and companions and things. So you don't want to spend too much. Uh, you don't want to die of damage. But you also don't want to like try and negate the damage too much. Because you'd want to stop getting insanity as well. As you go up your insanity track, the characters get stronger. Um, it's an amazing, amazing game. It's very modular. There's a lot in this that comes with the actual base game. Um, I'm also hoping in the future to be able to get the other seasons. Season 2 adds a whole load more of extra stuff. And it's another 6 episodes and more heroes. And there's other Elder Gods that you can get. So hopefully I'll be able to track some of those down. Um, I've actually absolutely fell in love with this game that I ordered about 18 months ago. But it didn't turn up until this year, uh, actually December this year. So uh, in 2022, I played a lot of Cthulhu Death May Die. And I've only played it in December. Um, I think this may have a shout of getting into my top three games of all time. Um, potentially this, Marvel Champions. And as you can see there, Too Many Bones. They'll be my top three, I think, in the future. Because I've played a lot of this recently and I plan on playing more. It's amazing. I highly recommend it. Um, potentially going to go up even higher in my list but obviously I've not played a ton of it in 2022 but yeah love this game so that's why I've cheated it into the list um, hope you enjoy it too if you get it let me know um, who your favourite character is because I've played a few but not all of them and a lot of them are really cool so number four on this list is Star Wars The Clone Wars it's a pandemic style game so there is quite a few caveats here 
if you do not like Pandemic and how original Pandemic plays, there's a good chance you're not going to like this. But this does mix it up quite a bit. Um, you have different bosses on this one. A um, little bit like the... Uh, what was it? There's another game, that, another Pandemic game that does it. Um, the War of the Lich King or something it's called. Wrath of the Lich King, I think it's called. Um, you've got four enemies you fight against. Uh, you've got Count Dooku. You've got... Is it Count Dooku? You've got, yeah, Count Dooku, Darth Maul, the Sarge Ventress, and General Grievous. And you also have heroes from the Star Wars universe that you play as, who each have different special abilities, their free actions each turn. Uh, very similarly to Pandemic, you take turns oh, I don't know, turn that, on the map. You can move, you can do an attack kind of action to kill off some dro droids instead of diseases. Um, the droids don't spread this, in this game like they do in Pandemic. If you hit more than three on one location, you just lose one threat straight away and you add a blockade to that location. The blockade um, means you have to get rid of that blockade first before you can kill off any more enemies. And if it does it again, then you lose another threat. If you get to seven threat or eight threat, it's game over. Um, it's quite tricky in that respect um, because it's quite, quite a family game. The first two levels are a little bit too easy. You can do three missions or you can do four missions and you can do any up to six missions to make it much harder. You can even add more if you want to because there's loads of different mission cards in here. Um, so the variability is fantastic. I would suggest uh, if you know your Pandemic and you're an, like a, a regular gamer, uh, do more than four. Uh, four is quite easy. Three is very easy, good for children maybe. Um, but like two, five or six is a great game. Uh, a lot of variability. There's four different, like say, four different enemies you can fight. Um, and unlike Pandemic, you do their action first before you do the spread disease kind of thing. Um, it's called infestation normally, or infection in Pandemic. And in this, it's, um, I can't remember what it's called, but you put a droid on the planet instead. So uh, it's a really cool, unique twist on the game, and we really love it. Uh, well, I do, especially. Not sure if my wife loves it that much, but I love Star Wars. It's a great time to have a game. You can play Anakin Skywalker, you can play Obi-Wan, Yoda. Um, you can play Mace Windu, uh, you can play uh, Ahsoka Tano, whose name I always forget. And my favourite character from all the Star Wars is Darth Maul. So for me, I love this one. So caveat there, if you don't like Star Wars and you don't really like Pandemic, this one might not be for you, but I like both a lot. So I love it. Um, and it's different enough to Pandemic to not feel exactly the same as a Pandemic game. Um, you have attack cards, you have defend cards. Um, you lose cards depending on life damage you take. Um, you have to complete different missions, which is different. Um, there is a different feel to it, but it also does feel like a Pandemic game. So enough similarities to understand where it comes from, but also enough differences to make it its own game. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I've loved this game so far. So let's get this one to number three, nearly at the top. But number three for me is another game that's on my Pelax. It's Sleeping Gods here. Um, first off, it's one of the most beautiful looking games that you will ever find. Just look at that cover, it is amazing, it is incredible, the art inside is great. As you can see from the back of the box, in the book the pictures are great, the characters look cool. The um, the, uh, the attack system when you're fighting, which you don't always have to fight, you can run away from fights most of the time, you can choose your options which will limit what fights you get into. The story is fantastic, you're sucked into this world with this god and you're trying to get totems to escape. Um, you, the way you play through the deck is really cool. You start on a quite easy ship location thing, cards every turn. As you get through the deck, you get into harder cards each time that can give you negative status effects or issues with how you're playing. Um, you want to try and make choices using your intuition and trying to be smart. But you also want to see what kind of things other bits do. It's really interesting. All the options are different. You're like, oh, do I want to buy something? Do I want to try and talk this person into helping me out? Do I want to attack them and just steal the stuff? Am I going to go and help this ghost ship? Will helping the ghost ship affect me negatively? Am I going to have to fight if I do that? Do I want to fight? Um, and you can make choices throughout to not have to fight if you really want to. But I think the fighting system in this game is really, really unique. Your cards all line up together in a kind of a table. Each card has like nine spaces on. And if you've got a, a character next to one character, you can do splash damage across. So if you don't beat one character's defense or you're going to struggle to, you can hit the character with the lowest amount of uh, like shield kind of thing. And if your accuracy matches that, then you can sometimes splash damage over to the one on the right or the left of it. And you've got to try and figure out how to do that in your four attack turns before they attack you back, which is going to be best for your ship's health and your characters you've attacked with, uh, which ones are going to give you the better outcomes overall. 
which characters have got the most attack, which have got the most accuracy, which ones can take the damage, which ones can't. And obviously the further you play into the game, the more damage and uh, fatigue you get on your characters as well as you go. It can be really tricky to manage all of that at once. If you can then hopefully get to a port after the fight to heal up, you're like, yes, I've made it. Or no, we're not going to get there. It's gonna, it's so close. It's a really tense and fun back and forth. Um, a lot of people find it really hard and have said it's quite difficult to get through without dying. We so far have not died. We're halfway through what is my second campaign. First campaign was really fun, but we didn't finish it because my partner didn't want to finish it. Um, so there is people that won't like this game. It's a lot of story. It's a lot of reading. It's a lot of choices. And the story, I think, is forefront at the front of this game. Um, the action is also great as well. If you get to fight, it's really interesting, like I've just said. But some people do not like the amount of time it takes to get through all that, to get to the story, to get through the choices, to get through the book and read and read and read. But I have loved every minute of it. It's an amazing game. If you like story games and you like adventure, this game is definitely one I would highly recommend. Um, but yeah, make sure you check it out first a bit more yourself because some people I know don't like it. Um, I love it. My best friend loves it too. We can't wait to get it back to the table once we've got time to get some more campaign games played because we've got a few campaigns on the go at the minute and we love them all. Um, but I can't recommend this game highly enough. Sleeping Gods by Ryan Lockett is fantastic. Uh, I think it's Red Raven Games. Uh, so let's get to number two. Which games has beaten Sleeping Gods? So in at number two, we have Marvel Dice Throne. Now I got the Kickstarter box, which comes with all of the characters. As you can see, it's nicely pictured up every side. The art is fantastic from Manny Tremblay. Apologies if I got that name wrong. These are all the characters on the back. It is super simple to set up. You open the box. Like so, you pick which hero you want to play as. Oh, I want to play as Thor. Here's Thor's tray. Inside Thor's tray is all of Thor's things. Um, he's got his nice cardboard thing that folds out, telling you what other stuff does. He's got a little leaflet that tells you of his abilities and what they all are, and what his dice are, and on the back how to play him. And then inside you've got all his bits and bobs uh, and cards that came with sleeves because I got the Kickstarter stuff. And um, the dice are really nicely marbled. Each character has their own coloured stuff and on the dices. So this is Thor's dice. Um, it's not really coming up very well, but it's got really nice blue and light blue and dark blue marble in effect throughout. Uh, he's got his own tokens, he's got his health, and he's got his own cards for power-ups and stuff. And each of the characters is really well balanced. Now, I made a list on this game on this channel for um, most powerful heroes in this game. And I found it really hard to do. I expected it would be an easy list to put together, but when I really thought about it, when I played it a bit more, um, I found it was really difficult to do. I played a lot of Marvel Dice Throne with my partner and friends and other people, and not many people have said a lot of characters stand out with being super strong. Uh, sometimes, depending on your dice rolls, it can seem very strong, but as you play it out a bit more and you use your cards and learn the game, then you're like, oh, I don't know. Some people think that uh, Scarlet Witch is the strongest. She definitely is very good. Um, some people think that it's uh, Black Widow. But you also then, if you look at other characters in the box, you've got people like Captain Marvel. Uh, she's also super strong. She's quite a vanilla character, easy to learn, easy to play, but very strong. Spider-Man, if you get the rolls good enough, he can do combo attack, which lets you attack again a second time, which is really powerful. Loki, if you use the cards right, can be great too. Um, Doctor Strange, very powerful. Black Panther can absorb damage and do damage back. They're all got really cool things that make them not only thematic to the Marvel Universe, but also really great characters in this game. And they all work really well. Um, I loved it so much I backed for the extra stuff I got. This dice tray which pops together in the corners to give you a nice little dice tray to use. Uh, you end up with a Marvel dice tray. And we've got the uh, nice neoprene mats as well with the art on. Got this one and I also end up with this one. Both look amazing on the table. Uh, both really, really great. Um, I love me a mat. And this game just is fantastic. It's really easy to teach. It's really easy to play. Um, if you want a quick game when someone comes around who likes Marvel? Well, quick game, what can we play? Marvel Dice Turn, half an hour, 25 minutes. Uh, easy to have one game. If you want to play a few games, which they normally do. Then you'll play three games, maybe an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes. It is fantastic. It's always fun. It's always close. It's always tense. 
Uh, my only downside with this is I would say three and four players, it's not really very good. If you've got four people who want to play it, I would play it as a little tournament of 1v1 on both sides. Two, 1v1, 1v1. Winner of both plays the winner of both. Loser plays loser. And then you can give uh, second, third, fourth. Um, because two and three players does work. Um, sorry, three and four players does work, but it's not great. It takes a lot of time waiting. There's not a lot for you to do while you're waiting for your turn to come back around. And who you choose to attack is a bit, um, a bit uh, weird and up to you. You can choose to hit, hit the person with the most health that gets you a bonus in a three-player game. Or you can choose to just mess about with the other person, which is kind of what we did last time. And both me and my wife attacked uh, my best friend, Will. And um, it was funny, but he didn't enjoy it very much. So it was a good, funny game, but it wasn't really great. Uh, it's much better at 1v1, 2-player. I think that's exactly what it's designed for. And you do get characters in here that you could use for the Marvel Dice Throne Adventures as well. Uh, so you can play these through Dice Throne Adventures as well if you want to, which I have not done yet, but uh, hopefully I'll get that in the future and give it a go. Um, so there's a lot of gameplay in here, and it's a lot of fun. Um, played this quite a lot this year, and every time it's been fun. I don't think I've had one bad game. Even if you roll badly, you can mitigate it. So I really, really highly recommend Marvel Dice Throne. That's why it's my number two. Fantastic game. Um, very nearly my number one, but it just got beat out by one game. Uh, what's made my game number one? Uh, like I said, it was really hard to put this list together, but game number one has to be this game because it's it's not actually on my Calyx in the games room. Uh, we store this downstairs in the lounge, right next to the kitchen where we play, and it is Wonderland's War. We've played this game at least twice a month since I've got it. Um, first month about eight times, nine times. Love it, love it, love it. We had the base regular game. I got really lucky and managed to get a deluxe copy um, off the website somehow. I think I got the last one because someone else told me a minute, they went on a minute later and it was sold out. Um, and we absolutely love it. Um, we play it all the time with my best friend Will so much so that he's kind of ended up getting into board game hobby himself and buying some games. And this was one of the first ones he tried to get and he couldn't get it. Um, he has backed it on the Kickstarter so he will get a copy eventually. Um, but that hasn't come. Obviously, we've backed everything on the deluxe Kickstarter stuff come in. Uh, we've got the deluxe version already, so we've backed all the new expansion. Uh, got some cards and things and bits and bobs. Um, and this game is fantastic. Um, it's really great kind of area control game where you first off you build up your powers and you go around a kind of, not really a rondelle, but like around a card system around the tea party. It's called. There's various different cards with power ups. You can go as far as you like, but you can't go backwards after that. So you can go forward and take a card, and then people after you could go all the way around the board and take a card. When you get back to the start, you have to take a negative um, chip based on what you roll on the dice. And these uh, negative give you negative points for the shards. Uh, the dice has up to three shards on it, so you could end up picking up minus three points at the end of the game. Um, there is a few ways to get rid of those. Um, and you can build your bag to make the... Uh, random pulls you do on your battles and on the five different areas of the board later for the next section in the war stage um, they come with these chips now I obviously now have the deluxe version so I have this chip set which comes in a beautiful case and is really nicely organized um, when I had the regular version I bought some uh, coin capsules to make them kind of look like this and these are all wonderful chips they feel great in the bag so say that's a green monster and stuff. Um, you get everyone gets a double negative chip to start with. Everyone gets three singles to start with as well before the game starts. Two in your bag at the start and then one at the end of the first tea party phase. Every tea party phase, everyone gets at least one more madness chip. If you have the most shards, you get two and you get to half the number of shards you've got on your board. But you don't really want to get two of these because when you pull out instead of scoring on your battle, they make you lose men out of the battle. So. It's really important to try and not pick these up as you go. Uh, you can get forge chips to help you forge your character and improve your abilities, making your character even stronger. You can get special Wonderlandian powers here. You can get help from allies. Um, and you get your own chips, which are all pretty much the same for each character. You get some three level ones, which are strong and give you abilities off your cards. If you pay for them, get them upgrades with the forge things. You can end on the battle track on forge symbols as well. So you can normally forge a few things in one one go sometimes um, you can then forge any chips you like so if you've got like level one chips that you don't think are great or the level one of your character 
because only worth one point on the battle track you can get rid of them and then you've got more chance of pulling your better chips and the allies that do more things for you um, and even in the base game there's four different sets of rules for the ally chips and what they do so you can mix it up really well um, and there's five playable characters so you can play up to five players I personally don't like the green guy the um, I can't remember what he's called but he adds poison chips and things and I think he brings the game down a little bit when you play with him. We normally only play with four character, four people anyway, so we tend to not play him. And the game is just amazing. It's always different. There's quest cards as well, and they give you loads of points. If I win the game, which is not very often, I'll win on quest points. Um, and quest points alone. But this game is just amazing. The art is brilliant. The miniatures are fantastic. Uh, even without the miniatures, the cardboard pieces are brilliant as well. Uh, the miniatures are so good that I've started painting some of mine. I'm really happy with how the queen has come out. Uh, she's not too hard to do. She's just some regular colours and I've got a bit of gold on the axe and stuff. Um, but I spent about eight hours painting that and I'm not a painter um, by any means. But I really enjoyed it because I love this game so much. And actually playing as her as one of the characters now, I really enjoy using the mini because I feel quite proud I've done that. And um, the, the models are really nicely done. Um, they match the art brilliantly. Uh, Manny Trembley again on this one, as with Dice Throne number two. So I don't know if it's just his impact that makes his game was wonderful, but the art for me really does have a big uh, part to play in how the theme works and how much you get stuck into the game. Um, everyone I've played this with has loved it. I've taken it to my game group in, uh, I go to every Thursday, and they really enjoyed it and want to play again sometime. Just that it's a bit, it was a bit long for that session that's normally a Thursday evening. Um, but the people that played it, so I did play, definitely play it again. They really enjoyed it. I love it. My wife loves it. My best friend has bought his own copy now and wants to get his paint up when he gets it. He loves it. Um, and so does his missus, his wife. And she's not really a gamer. Um, but she has recently gotten into gaming through playing this with us. Um, it's a fantastic game. It's brought me and my friends and my wife closer. Um, and it's been our most played game of 2022 I think if you've seen my channel you'll see that I play this a lot and I absolutely love it um great great game have you played Wonderland's War would it be your number one uh, if not please let me know in the comments what your number one is I'd love to see what everyone else's favorite game of the year was there's lots of games here I've not mentioned that I haven't had a chance to play there's games that I have here that I've bought like Bitoku that I've heard is amazing but I still haven't played because I don't have a lot of time uh, but it's downstairs ready to play hopefully soon um, and things like that like brew as well from Pandasaurus games that looks fantastic got that to play still haven't played Star Wars Outer Rim I know someone needs to shoot me I love pirate games but still haven't played Maracaibo but I have it here um, I really need to find more time to play these games so let me know yeah if you like the video please like it as well and leave any comments and uh, subscribe to the channel if you can that would really help thanks for watching this video 2022 has been an amazing year Let's make 2023 even better.